Hey, Z, it's Caravalo from ZK Research here, and I'm inside the Expo Hall at VMware Explorer 2024. I'm at the, I'm gonna go inside the VMware Software Defined Edge stand and uh, talk to them about what they're doing in the areas of SASE, SD-WAN, and Edge Compute. So come on in the stand, and I hope you enjoy the ZK Tour. Okay, my first stop in the VMware Software Defined Edge stand inside the larger Expo Hall is with Jay Thondakuti. Uh, Jay, uh, what do you do at VMware? So I'm uh, in the product marketing team focusing on uh, VeloCloud SASE within the Software Defined Edge uh, division. All right, so let's talk SASE. Uh, this is something I think uh, VMware's had for a long time. Yes. Uh, obviously, with uh, Broadcom acquisition, you've had some changes. So, just just talk about the overall structure of uh, the, the the SASE group now. Yeah. So, uh, we are excited with uh, VelaCloud SASE secured by Symantec, and what we have done, uh, this is we have brought in the best in class VelaCloud SD WAN with uh, Symantec SSE and uh, uh, VelaCloud SD Access to enable users to connect to workloads anywhere at the edge, in the data center, and in the cloud in a secure, reliable, and optimal manner. And I think one of the unique things with uh, the uh, VMware VeloCloud SASE is the insertion of compute. Yes. Right, you don't, uh, while there are lots of SD-WAN and SASE vendors, I never hear them talking about compute. Yeah. But I know uh, some of the examples you've given in the past at previous VMware Explorers and uh, at, even at Mobile World Congress and events like that, have the edge compute stack uh, brought into it. And so, uh, talk about that, what that does for the customer, and maybe some examples if you could. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, when we think about it, right, digital transformation in the enterprise started in the data center a couple of decades ago, moved to the cloud. But what we see is more and more applications are being deployed at the edge. When you think about video inferencing, smart factories, mm -hmm. robotics, a lot of these applications at the edge bring a direct benefit to the enterprise from a productivity perspective or operational efficiency perspective. And a lot of these apps are managed by operations teams who are part of the production units within the enterprise. They really don't want to deal with the complications or the intricacies of the infrastructure on which they run these applications. Where VeloCloud SASE comes into, the, comes into play is by creating an intelligent overlay that enables these operations teams to deploy these applications at scale across thousands of locations while we provide the networking and security that they need in order to enable these apps. So we are definitely excited about the app awareness or the workload awareness at the edge. And we are seeing more and more AI-driven applications. I was going to ask about that. Is AI driving more edge use cases? Yes, in yeah. fact, uh, a lot of these applications at the edge are driven by AI that leverage what we call as uh, SLMs or small language models. And these small language models that can be deployed at the edge communicate with the LLMs or large language models that are deployed in the cloud. You need the right kind of networking and security to ensure the right treatment for these applications. And we are excited with that VeloCloud SASE is AI ready to do this. Yeah, and in fact, uh, it's been interesting the AI journey companies have been on recently too, where I think for a while, companies were trying to consolidate their data um, into one location, and I think they've realized that's not really achievable. Exactly. Leave the data where it is. Correct. And so, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're absolutely right, because uh, when we think about edge AI, as we call it now, or workloads at the edge, a lot of data is getting generated, and it has to be con consumed at the edge, and there is a latency-sensitive element that comes into play. A lot of these applications are ultra-low latency sense uh, applications. They can't wait for responses from the cloud in order to take actions. Yeah, and one of the other big changes, uh, you talked about the secured by Symantec, right, since right. the last time we met. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I've heard positive things from many customers about that. Uh, you know, I think because you partnered for a lot of security before. So talk about how that's changed what you can do with security now. Yeah, well, one of the, one of the great things that has happened is the fact that we have integrated our VeloCloud HD-WAN solution with Symantec SSE. Now, one of the great things about Symantec is the solution is deployed by some of the top banks worldwide. They operate in a highly uh, you know, risk-prone and compliance-prone environment. So the technology underpinnings that we leverage with Symantec SSE is uh, something that brings threat and data protection 
with a level of uh, comprehensive capabilities that is uh, totally unparalleled in the market. Yeah, that's great. And if I look at some of the other attributes down here too, um, on the operation side, that's again been a, a, a strength for yeah. VMware, right? This yeah, more AI yeah. coming there. So can you talk about what you've done from an operational standpoint so, to make the job easier for customers? In fact, that was a big part of the keynote this morning, indeed. was making things easier, easier for, for the customers. Yeah. yeah, and that's been a focus when we think about it, even for VeloCloud SD-WAN adoption, adoption uh, the success has come from the simplicity of deployment and operations. And what we have seen with semantic integration, for example, where uh, when you deploy a security solution, it should not increase the burden on SOC teams with the alerts and notifications that increase noise. With Symantec, we have an order of magnitude reduction in the SOC burden. So the Symantec solution brings into play uh, what we call as a set of capabilities that leverage AI ML, and in fact, a fleet of Symantec threat researchers to reduce the noise in this notification mechanism considerably. So the signal that the SOC teams get are uh, curated and uh, they have to pay attention to a lower order of notifications that uh, uh, come into play. Yeah, and you know, one of the promises of SASE has always been to bring security and networking together. Yeah, uh, I'd say historically, some companies were on board with that, not a lot of companies, but uh, it seems like over the last year or so, there has been more companies moving that way. Is that something you're seeing as well? We, we are beginning to see that, uh, ZS, uh, because one of the strategies we are seeing among a lot of customers who are thinking about networking and security is to reduce the number of tools and services that they are having to deal with. And sometimes they don't have an idea whether they need to be re removing a particular service or not. Now with networking and security coming together with SASE and the ability to enforce security in the cloud for the traffic patterns where it makes sense uh, or to enforce security at the edge or on the branch location is something that a lot of customers are very open to. And if it is coming from a single vendor, it just reduces the burden on them to have to manage multiple solutions with different types of interfaces, different policies that they have to at least rationalize using a third party tool, all those things start uh, uh, going away. So the move towards a single vendor SASE is beginning to take momentum. Obviously it will take time. When you have uh, solutions that are deeply entrenched, it takes some time for you to do the right due diligence. But the good thing is our solution gets integrated with the customer's journey at their starting point. So that's uh, one of the big benefits of our solution. Yeah, so you can start with SD-WAN or start with SSE and then bring them, bring them together or bring them together to begin. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, I think historically it's been crazy those two groups yeah. were running uh, separately, especially now with so much of security being network driven, right? A lot of the network telemetry is used for security. So I, I'm not sure how companies avoid bringing them together, so. No, yeah. the, no yeah, the, yeah, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right. Uh, when we think about it, you have security enforcement in the cloud, but how do you bring the traffic to that enforcement point? Yeah. And this is where, uh, you know, uh, VeloCloud SD-WAN with Symantec SSE makes perfect sense for a lot of our customers. Yeah. All right, well, Jay, well, that, uh, thanks for the update on uh, VMware VeloCloud SASE. Uh, it's good to see, even uh, post-Broadcom, there's a lot of innovation going on. Indeed. Yeah. And thank you for stopping by, no, Jay. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, I'm here at the SD-WAN stand now inside the Expo Hall, and I'm with Chris Lee. Uh, Chris, what do you do at uh, VMware? Uh, I am a Senior Product Marketing Manager responsible for SD-WAN uh, in Velopa. Okay, so let's talk SD-WAN. Uh, um, when I look at the slide here, I think uh, SD-WAN has been a core component of VMware uh, right. since it acquired uh, VeloCloud. Uh, there are some unique differentiations though, so can you talk about some of those? Yes. Um, so, um, you know, with edge computing um, exploding, I think uh, Gartner said something about 50% of the data um, generated by the enterprise in 2027 is going to be done outside of the data center and, and cloud. Um, so it's going to be at the edge. Yeah. So the edge is a big driver for edge computing. And if you look at, you know, edge computing running at the edge, um, computing is done there but the majority of the components are still back in the cloud. So edge computing still needs to send some data back to the cloud for things like uh, analytics, machine learning. So we need a solid WAN connection to send traffic back to the cloud. And that's where you know, SD-WAN comes in. Yeah, and so 
and that's a good point because a lot of people think of um, edge compute being its own little environment, but you must have that connectivity. That's right. And uh, actually, I was talking to your GM Sanjay Upal this morning, mm -hmm. and he mentioned that uh, VMware is the only one that puts C, <laughs> right. that being compute, that's into, right. into SAS or SD WAN, right. right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, if you look at uh, live streaming, for example, you know, if you are monitoring an uh, unmanned site, like a cell phone tower, for example, and someone breaks in, you need the solid connection to see what's going on real time, right? So you can yeah. react in time. Yeah, and then I've, I've noticed here you've got all different kinds of connectivity types. You've recently just added satellite as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we SD1 solution always work with any kind of connection, but we recently came out with a 710 5G Edge hardware, which has 5G built into it. So now we can apply, you know, circuit uh, conditioning to make the 5G link a lot better. The same thing for satellite. A lot of our customers are adopting satellite now because it's available everywhere. And uh, with DMPO, dynamic multipath optimization, we are able to fix a lot of the jitter, latency, packet drop that you know these uh, connections uh, usually have. We make the, the pipes a lot cleaner for applications to use. And what kind of use cases are you seeing for 5G or satellite? Uh, 5G and satellite are usually deployed in places where there's no connection, like a mining place, for example, um, where there's no solid, uh, you know, wire connection. So, uh, what we've seen is, at least uh, from our customer customer base, for the last two years, uh, satellite adoption has grown like 600%. So a lot of our customers are starting to pick up 5G and satellite connections, and together with you know edge computing and with Velo Cloud, it makes perfect sense to put those two together. All right, so edge computing coming to an enterprise near you, but don't forget your connectivity. That's correct. Right, right. and I think you're going to show me a demo here, right? Yes, what are you, what yes. are you demoing here at the booth? Yes. So this demo is about two machines playing tic tac toe. And um, AI tic tac toe, that's a good use case for that's it. That's right. You know, um, initially they're not very smart, but the more they play against each other or against a human, for example, um, it gets smarter, right? Because it sends all the data back to the cloud. Machine learning is going to learn, you know, different moves so it can anticipate all the moves better and it gets smarter over time. All right, so show me how this works. All right. Chris, well, thanks for the fantastic demo. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Yes, um, you know, edge computing is prevalent nowadays, and uh, we want to make it really scalable. And what we did was we we took advantage of the SD WAN scalability that we've we've deployed for the last 12 years or so, um, and we add edge computing. So now, from a single orchestration, you can deploy, monitor, and troubleshoot both SD WAN and um, and ECS edge computing. Okay, well, uh, uh, appreciate the time and appreciate the demo. Okay, my final stop on the, on this tour is with Chris Taylor. Uh, Chris, what do you do for uh, VMware and Broadcom? Well, I do product marketing for Edge Compute and Telco products. Yeah. And in this demo, we're looking at retail and how can we help them with uh, retail digital transformation in their stores, so at their edge sites. Yeah, and so before we start, let's talk a little bit about the VMware by Broadcom Edge Compute strategy. Okay, so we're helping um, every, you know, customers across many different verticals implement Edge AI um, in order to you know, enhance their business operations at their edge sites. And our aim is to make it really simple, take out the complexity of managing these, these applications and infrastructure so they can focus on what they're trying to achieve with that edge AI application. Yeah, and certainly edge has exploded over the last few years. Right? Right. I think there's right. far more interest in it now. In fact, um, uh, what's been interesting to see is uh, customers just um, you know, I think everybody was enamored with cloud, but now they've realized that you can't run everything in a public cloud. Some things right. are best done at edge. There's a lot of things like, you know, computer vision. Yeah. It's hard to do in the cloud because there's latency. Um, you know, there's a lot of data. You would need a big pipe if you like had something like this on every one well, of your self Well, even then you have too much latency. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always, I think computer vision is a perfect yeah. example for it. So what are you showing here? From a so this is an example of a retail app. Um, this one does self-checkout by identifying uh, objects and then calculating out a price to do a checkout. Uh, but it's, a, it's an example. It's not really the app. We're showcasing how 
you know, computer vision is being used by retailers for um, loss prevention, for uh, doing uh, shelving. You know, they have cameras at the ceiling. They're looking at how customers are shopping and then optimizing the store layout. And what they need, though, is a platform to run all these applications and then to keep them up to date. Yeah. And that's where Edge Compute Stack comes in. Uh, it's a different management methodology to keep these applications uh, up to date. Yeah, and so while you're just demoing, being able to identify them, yeah. uh, I know there are a number of touchless technologies now and different airports and stadiums that actually use computer vision as a way yeah. uh, of identifying them. You know, we talked to one customer, they weren't were in retail, but they are in oil and gas, and they said when they deploy a new Edge server, it takes them three months and 60 pages of documentation wow. and custom fr scripts to do this, working with a system integrator. And same with retail, you know, the way it works today is they do a staging process with their system integrator, install everything, and then ship it to the store. What we do is we pre-install with a basic VMware Edge Computer Stack runtime, either by your hardware vendor or an SI, but it's just generic at that point. You're not installing your applications. We ship it to the store, and then the store manager follows some basic instructions to connect it to the network. It then calls home, looks at this desired state repository and pulls down all the configurations and work, uh, you know, components it needs to run all those workloads at the store. And, and then over time, you know, it's really easy because if you need to update one of your applications, you just update the files in the Git repository and then all your edges check in and update when I think the important part here is it's pre-configured, validated design. So it's almost out of the box into the edge and it works. Yeah. 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 Well, it's zero touch. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, we're taking our technology from VeloCloud SD WAN, where we pioneered, you know, zero touch management, and we're applying that to edge computing and application management. Yeah. In fact, this morning during the keynotes of VMware Explorer Hawk Tan, yeah. uh, the CEO of Broadcom talked about the importance of better integration. Uh, the importance of simplicity and having products that are easier to use, and so this yeah. is a great example of that. Yeah. yeah. All right, Chris, well, thanks for the demo, and thanks for the uh, quick tutorial on, um, on VMware Edge Cloud Orchestrator. Great, thanks for coming by. Thanks. All right, well, I'm on the other side of the stand with Chris Taylor, and yeah. uh, we're here at the uh, Smart Manufacturing demo right. uh, running on VMware Edge Compute. Uh, what are you demoing here, Chris? So manufacturers are looking you know, across their factory and looking at you know, how can they improve operations with technology. Um, computer vision is one, using it for um, inventory management as we're going to show in this demo, as well as you know, checking that workers are wearing their safety equipment or doing quality inspection. And then we're also seeing manufacturers like Audi you know, incorporate machine learning uh, to do uh, control their welding robots as well as their torque wrenches. And you know, it's a lot of these additive computing into the factory where it's already difficult to manage compute in a factory. You know, the way most manufacturers update software in the factory is a technician goes out with a USB drive yes. and, and solves it during yeah, the yeah, production yeah, yeah. breaks. Yeah. And so we want to make that much easier to manage, but also make it much easier to add these you know, smart technologies. So for example, this computer vision system, this one's doing inventory tracking of these little pucks that this mini factory is producing. And it's running on this little hardware device. And same thing with what we're doing with retail, we're making it very easy to manage the applications and the infrastructure using what's called the desi desired state methodology. So the nodes check in, see if there's any updates, and they update themselves. So very easy, zero touch operation. Uh, okay, Chris, well that was two great edge computing use cases, retail and smart manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, well those are three great conversations. Love finding out what VMware is doing in the areas of SD-WAN, SASE, and edge compute. Love the demos and love the use cases they provided. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next ZK Tour.